Hi, Paul here, and I'm going to show you how you can create a multi-layer map to correlate uh, world event information with your own data and find correlation and um, perhaps um, suggestion of cause and effect information. Now, this is very timely because right now the world is experiencing the corona or COVID-19 virus outbreak. Now you may be watching this sometime later and I'm very hopeful that that's going to be a historic event. Um, but uh, just working with a client right now where their supply chain is being affected by the virus outbreak. Um, shipments worldwide are being delayed and canceled and that's affecting business as it's affecting world economies and a lot of businesses and uh, we're working with this client to help them understand uh, analyze and to be able to proactively uh, respond to these shipment delays and understand where there's a correlation between the virus outbreak, the economic effects, and these shipping delays. Now, I can't share their data with you, but I'm going to use a sample set of data that will have the same effect. So as you can see, here is a map where I have, by country, I have online sales quantity. In the case of the client that I'm referring to, this might be shipment delays and rejected orders, etc but the effect would be generally the same. The lighter colored countries uh, have the highest quantity and the red dots are the uh, known cases for the coronavirus to date. And this comes actually from a web feed that is publicly available. So how did I create this map? Well, let's go back and I'm just going to create a new report page I'm going to copy a couple of slicers just to get this set up and we'll just start from scratch. Now in Power BI you have access to a few different map visuals. Now if we go over and grab, uh, yeah we'll sync those slicers since I copied them. If I just go over and I grab from my geography table the region country because Power BI recognizes that country is a geographic unit, uh, either based on the name or because that field has been categorized as a, a geographic unit, a country, it's going to automatically try to map that. So let's just go ahead and follow along. And uh, uh, I don't have anything to, to aggregate or to determine the size of these bubbles. So they're all the same size right now. But if I go to my measures and uh, we'll just grab a measure like online sales quantity, drag and drop that to the map and jump over to the visuals, you'll see that the uh, report designer was smart enough when I dragged and dropped the country to put that into the location property uh, or the location field well and then the size is the online sales quantity. So well and good, I have a very simple map here that uh, shows me some, some useful information. Now um, this map, this is the default map visual in Power BI. This is based on the Microsoft Bing map service. And it's the, the same type of map that you would get if you opened up your web browser, went to bing.com and chose maps. Uh, they leveraged that service here in Power BI and wrapped it into the standard map visual that you can see right here with the, the little globe. Now, we can do some more interesting things. You can see that I have a slicer for my product category. And if we add the category from my product table, to the map, again by dragging and dropping directly to the map, that would be the same thing as dropping it into the legend field well. And that creates these little pie charts. So this shows the segment or the division of the um, online sales quantity within each of the countries. And again, kind of useful information. Now I'm gonna jump back to my other map and just steal a table that I have down here. Choose, copy that using Control C, and I'll make a little bit of room. 
and I'll paste that with control V and you can see now that I have an interactive experience so not only could I uh, use my slicers here with my order dates and my product categories we'll just narrow that down to three different product categories and that will uh, make these uh, little pie charts a little bit easier to read and then when I click on one of the slices in the pie chart you can see that I only see the product uh, sales details for that category within this state range within this country all well and good but that's pretty much the limit of this map visual now I'm going to switch this out first thing I'm going to do is remove the category and I'm going to introduce the Esri map visual now Esri is the name of a company located in uh, Redlands California who um, are really known to be the, the go-to authority on uh, graphical information systems and mapping visuals. And you can see that when I add the Esri map visual here in Power BI, it's really inherited the same fields. Um, I want to visualize my online sales quantity as the, the color, or the background fill of these countries and you can see that that's working now here in the layers pane you can see that uh, larger numbers are represented with darker colors i want to be able to correlate my online sales quantity with the location of coronavirus cases to expose the capabilities of the esri map visual i click on the ellipsis in the upper right hand corner and choose edit. Now this exposes a toolbar with all of the features of this map visual. Now let me just uh, uh, say before moving on that uh, Esri makes this visual available for free. You don't have to set up an account, you don't have to log in, you don't have to have a license, and the features that I'm going to show you are all available for free. Now uh, Esri is a for-profit company and they have mapping and GIS software that is very feature rich and a lot of those features can be exposed through this visual at an extra cost and so you have the option of logging in with your account and enabling additional features and that's partially why this they make this visual available so that you uh, have the option of, of doing that but there's a lot of value here in just using the free features as they are we start with the base map the base map is uh, essentially the map layer itself this is going to be very similar to what you see when you use uh, online uh, mapping and navigation uh, software whether it's web-based or on your phone and you can change the look of the map to a dark gray canvas like this and that helps highlight these colored areas this I think is a good choice for this particular map we can also um, view street maps and topographical maps etc but I think that's going to work for us the next thing that I want to do is I want to add a reference layer now what's a reference layer Esri makes available within the um, free offering of this visual publicly available information uh, data that comes from the US Census that comes from the CDC World Health Organization etc so population statistics household income things like that all available um, for free we are looking for information about the virus outbreak and um, there are uh, ArcGIS customers who have actually exposed data uh, particularly the CDC has done this and they've exposed web feeds that allow us to get up to the date data so I'm going to go to the ArcGIS tab over here and I'm going to search on CDC Corona and press enter so we should see a, a, a number of custom reference layers that have been exposed by folks in the Esri community who have chosen to publish this and make these 
feeds available. The one that I'm interested in is this one right here. Now, if you set up an, uh, an Esri account, you go to the Esri website, you can actually get information about these feeds. And so you can find out who publishes them and decide how reliable that is and uh, how they're going to maintain them and make the data available in the future. And I'm going to add that layer to my map. Now, when I do that, <clears throat> you can see that there are a number of red dots and um, uh, what they call a heat map, which just means that uh, the larger the value is, the, uh, the larger this glowing area around these red points will appear. I'm going to go ahead and close this pane, and that's actually everything that I needed. Now, I don't like the... Um, uh, red theme over the red dots. I'm going to choose a different color. Now you have some limited options here, but if you go to map theme and go down to the color, you can revert that back to uh, a blue theme, which I believe is the only other option that we have, but that actually works for me pretty well. And we'll go ahead and close that. All right. Let's switch out of focus view because this is everything that I needed to do. I'll point out that in the Esri map now, there are two layers. There's the reference layer that we just added, and you can add multiple layers if you want. And um, then there's the region country uh, and our sales quantity, which came out of our data model. Now, uh, just to focus on either one of those, I can hide either of those layers and show the other one. I'm going to show both. And then lastly, let's go ahead and give my page a title that makes sense. So we'll add a text box. I'm going to go back to the visualization pane to the properties using the paint roller and I'm going to turn off the layers pane. I don't need that anymore. And we'll go ahead and just change the background of our report to match this, this uh, black theme that I've chosen. And uh, so we'll say that I want my page background to be, oh, how about this dark gray and we'll turn the transparency way down. And I'd already styled my uh, report page a bit, so we don't have to take time to do that. Let's go ahead and resize the map. All right, and there we go. So I have the coronavirus active cases up to the date information maintained by an authoritative party and then I have my data overlaid, and then I can use that to um, look at correlation between those different data points. And then the map is cross-drillable, much like other Power BI visuals, where if I click on a country, then that's going to cross-highlight and filter my other visuals. Thanks for watching.